Redditors who have been kidnapped, what was your experience like? Are there things you do now that you would have never done before? My father kidnapped me when I was 7, and it was the best thing that ever happened to me. I lived with my alcoholic mother and her insane boyfriend. I wasn't abused physically, but looking back the mental abuse and neglect was very traumatic. Some borderline child called it things. Anyways my father had visitation rights and picked me up every other weekend. One weekend he came to get me and saw that I had not eaten much, food was almost always under lock and key, and my mom and her boyfriend were nowhere to be found. So, my father told me, pack your stuff. We spent some time hiding out at different places with family, friends, even hotels in Lawlin and Vegas. It was like a mini vacation. I even remember staying at my dad's girlfriend's house when the cops showed up. I hid under the bed while they talked to her. At the end of the day, I never had to go back to my mom's boyfriend's house and my father won majority custody. I'm not sure how I would have turned out if I had stayed there. Thanks dad. How? I mean, obviously the right thing, but I'd assume that a court would look really poorly upon kidnapping, edit, or withholding the child from the other parent, or whatever it's called, maybe not if the mother told them she was fine with it, or just didn't report it, leaning towards she was fine with it, maybe once she found out it was the dad she let it go, or maybe it took her forever to report it, and that was used as evidence of neglect, mom definitely reported it. She said she hid under the bed while the cops talked to her dad's girlfriend. When I was maybe 10 or 11, my neighbor kidnapped me. She was this single woman in her 50s who was always super super nice to me. She was always on her porch and she'd wave when I came home from school. Anyway, I was walking home from school and she was waving as usual, but this time she was beckoning me over. I went up to her porch and she asked me if I wanted some meatloaf she made. I f***ing loved meatloaf, and she seemed harmless, so I said yes. I expected her to come outside with a plate or something, but instead she called me in and told me to sit downstairs. I felt weird about it, but I followed her into her basement and sat down on her couch. She brought me a plate of meatloaf, and I watched Pokemon 2000 on VHS. She had a freezer with those tube popsicle things too. After I ate, I told her I needed to go home, and she told me my parents called and asked her to keep me while they ran errands. I felt weird about it and suspected she was lying, but I just kinda went along with it. I remember I asked her if I could get my gamma boy at one point from my house, and she said my parents told me not to let me out of her sight. I remember watching Men in Black and falling asleep. When I woke up, I tried leaving, but the door was locked. She left some banana pudding for me on the table for when I woke up, so I just had that and went back to sleep. She opened the door at like 5 in the morning, woke me up, and asked me if I wanted to go home. She looked like she had been crying. I told her yes, and she let me go. My parents asked me where I was, and I just told them I went home with a friend after school. I didn't have a cell phone, so it was pretty normal for me to just be gone for a day. I didn't see my neighbor on her porch the next Monday, so I knocked on her door. She came outside, and we talked on the porch about stuff. We never talked about that night, and she probably thought I didn't even realize what happened. She didn't say, but I think she had a kid who died a couple years prior, and wanted to fill the gap. I never hated her for it or anything. Until I moved a couple years later, I would sit on her porch after school most days and she'd listen to my neat facts about space. Thank you for all the kind words. I really appreciate it. This is really sweet in a really messed up way. But I feel bad for her. Not messed up yet. The lady made a choice. She decided not to follow through with the plan. Everyone has a choice at the end of the day. I'm happy the lady was able to turn back before it was too late. And great on you op. You offered grace to a wounded lady. Something some adults can't even and don't even do. My sisters and I were kidnapped by our father repeatedly between the ages of 2 and 4. He would take us from our mother, she had brain damage and a serious drug problem, beat us if we made noise and lock us in a closet, and forget to feed us for days at a time. Each kidnapping lasted between 2 weeks and 6 months, depending on how long it took my mother to realize we were gone and ask for help. He was a very scary man. He just wanted the money from the state, food stamps and welfare. 
he also would try to get money out of my maternal grandmother. In fact, she's the only reason the cops kept getting involved and trying to locate him. She had money and influence and used it. I don't remember much because I was so young, but I remember being scared and in pain and a uniformed cop opening a door and letting light in. I was terrified of being locked in the dark four years after, and sandy haired men with mustaches still can make me very nervous. I'm 41 now. When I got divorced my kids were almost the exact same age as my sisters and I were when the kidnappings started. It was a struggle to keep those old fears in check. Has that affected anything with your kids? A bit. I was a very overprotective mom. It didn't help that Sarah Pryor, my best friend's other bestie, went missing when I was 11. They found a piece of her skull in the woods in between Catherine and my houses. Five years later, I also had a half-sister that I never got to meet because she disappeared when she was 16 and I didn't even know she'd existed until afterwards. Basically, I've known too many kidnapped kids, so I was never the mom who didn't expect it, which means my kids were never the kids who didn't know it could happen. I'm really not sure if that's good or bad. My son understood my worries, but my daughter just couldn't seem to ever get it. This happened a while ago, when I was 6. I come from a third world countries, and at the time, kidnappings were at an all time high. We lived in a fairly nice neighborhood, no kidnappings there, no theft, great neighbors. We felt pretty safe and therefore, my mom wasn't too worried. Our house was a gated residence, so we had a front yard and backyard. I was out one morning in the front yard, playing with some toys, while my mom was inside working or cooking, or whatever. Someone knocked on the front gate, me being a dumb child decided to go up and ask who it was. It was this fairly old man who asked for some water, me being the nice, helping child opened the door and was snatched immediately. I don't particularly remember what happened after that, but I woke up in a compound which I'm pretty sure was far from home. They hadn't done anything bad to me a fake, but they did try to feed me food that I didn't like. I was a picky child and so, all I ate was fruit. They had asked for ransom, which to this day, I don't know how much it was. They just kept me in a room all day with duct tape on my mouth and ropes around my feet and hands. They did take duct tape off to let me drink water or eat food. Anyways, a few days later, the police busted them and arrested them. They ended up in jail for life is what I was told. Not too long after that, my parents decided to move to a different country and now all is well. I still think about what might have gone wrong if they had sold me into child slavery or something. Fairly common in my country. Life resumed after that. I'm as happy as a 20 year old can be. Nothing really changed. I still don't know why I was kidnapped, maybe for ransom, or whatever. In exactly a month, it'll be my 14th kidnapping anniversary. Out of this entire thread this is the only story of someone who was actually kidnapped. So glad you ended up being okay though. Thank you. I always wondered what happens if your nose is stuffed when people put tape of your mouth. As someone with a displaced septum, that gives me mad anxiety. My mother kidnapped me. My parents were in the middle of an ugly divorce and my mom was a stay at home mom. Since she depended on my father for money, she assumed she would lose me in the custody battle. My mother is a dual Canadian and American citizen. My father is American. So one day, when my dad was at work, she didn't send me to school and took me from USA to Canada. There was nothing my dad could do, because we weren't in USA. It was several months before my mom decided to do the right thing and go back to the states. By that time my dad has lawyered up so well that she basically lost all rights to parenting me. This happened when I was 6 to 7. My mother ended up moving back to Canada to be with her family. If I could go back, I would have begged my mom not to return to the states. What the courts didn't care to hear was that my dad was a functioning alcoholic. He was abusive in every way. When my parents divorced, my mom couldn't afford to live in USA. So I was raised by my abusive father for another decade until I moved out at 17. He had me too terrified to tell anyone, just like my mom was. I'm now 28 and trying to build positive relationships with both my parents, now that I've forgiven both of them. Mom kidnapped me and took me from USA to Cannes. Several months later mom felt guilty and returned me to USA. It's a really difficult process, forgiving an abusive parent. 
how is it going for you? I'm not the op, but I had an alcoholic father who did and said some pretty f***ed up over the years. Eventually I realized that he was just a really broken person who was doing the best he could, loving me the only way he knew how. He also kind of got his shit together, still an alcoholic, but more emotionally supportive, in the last few years, and it went a long way to repairing our relationship. Before he died a few months ago our relationship was actually the best it had ever been, and I honestly loved and liked him as a person. So back when I was around 7 or 8, my family went to visit our home country of Pakistan. Anytime anyone from the USA comes and visits PA it's kinda of a big deal depending on where you're going. Where we visited was a small village of maybe 200 or so people, and so word gets out fast that rich Americans are coming. This makes us targets as people believe we come with pockets full of treasures and golden money. Anyways, so I'm with my cousin who at the time was also ate at a sketchy ass arcade place. Sketchy because it only had like 3 games and it was located in the back of a beat up mini store. So I'm playing and my cousin tells me it's time to go, but I was so into that the game I did not want to go, he leaves and I stayed. As I'm playing these two guys come into the arcade room and just start watching me play and start giving me comments on how good I was, and when I responded back, I responded back in English not the native language of Punjabi, so they knew I was an American. Next thing I know they grab me the hands and tell me to come with them. All I remember is crying my ass off while they dragged me in the daylight in front of other people to some house. Once at the location an old lady, who I assume was their mother was frantic as f and asking who I am, and why and I crying, and why am I there. The guys told her to pretty much stfu and nothing, and threw me into a room. I remember just standing at the door of the room, and banging and crying for what seemed hours and every now, and then they would tell me to stfu, or they would hurt me, but I kept crying and banging lol. After what seemed like many hours, the women slash mom slash opened the door and told me to run home. I booked so fast out of there, but I had no f***ing clue where the f*** I was. I just ran, and whenever I would see a kid or a woman I would ask where the arcade was, because I knew how to get home from there. Pakistan is notorious for what they do to little kids, especially young boys. Young boys are used for and trafficking and so reflecting back on this incident I would say I was one lucky kid, because god knows where I would be today. Hope those kids didn't hurt their mother for letting you free. I'm so sorry this happened to you, and I'm glad you're okay. Parents letting young children run around alone in a Pakistan. Your parents were idiots.